Hello everyone, welcome back, it's time for another Kaguya-sama Season 2 reaction. This time we're up to Episode 8. Sorry that this one's a little bit uh, late. Damn, the rhyme. I was just extremely tired on Sunday, and Sunday was pretty much a write-off. But fortunately, today is a public holiday, so I get to I get to record it now, this morning. So, uh, last episode was... Last episode was hilarious. Um... Just a real return to just the sheer humor now that the all the sort of serious serious ish election stuff is out of the way. We had Miko showing up, um, just constantly at the worst of times, just always reacting to uh just all of the crazy shenanigans going on and completely misunderstanding what's happening, which is great, I hope. I wouldn't mind seeing more of that, but I'm also waiting to see how she integrates with the group. And of those various things that she was walking into, there was uh, the underwear thing. Well, <laughs> yes. So um, the president yelling out to Shinomiya that he <laughs> that he likes black panties, just after she ran out of the room, yelling that he's a crying that she, that he's a man whore, and uh... God, that episode. And then the hand massage, which actually had a, a sort of a nice little moment in there, but was also hilarious in the the dual nature of the way that each of them was sort of interpreting the situation, where she was just blissfully, really happily and like hard at work doing this, providing this hand massage for him, not realizing that he's in just complete pain. <laughs> but just for her, she was just, oh, this is a nice thing to be able to do. Um... And he obviously didn't want to say anything because, well, he's getting the chance to get a hand massage from her. But too much to say the fact that she's actually pressing real hard. Um, so that was funny. And the, and of course the whole end, the post credit part where we had the shoujo manga filter sort of applied over everything, which was just wow. The way that this show can just pivot and do, well, and just do something different is just amazing to me. Just things like just changing the art style for this, although they have shown like quite a good range in their animation and art and stuff before. The show is great. I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm just going to jump into episode eight, which is... Miko Ino wants to control herself, Kaguya doesn't scare easily, and Kaguya wants to be examined. Okay, so just a reminder that these are full-length timer-based reactions, which means you'll need to watch along with your own copy of the show. I'll do a countdown, there'll be a timer just above the window there, but mostly that window is just going to be obscured for copyright reasons. Um, but I will show just occasional flashes of stuff that I might be looking at at the time when I'm reacting. So yeah, get ready to watch along with me. And I will be starting in 3, 2, 1, now. Will we get a season three of this? I really hope so. And if we do, what will the OP be like? Although at the moment, I guess, the way things are going, I wouldn't expect I would expect everything to be possibly slowed down a bit, unfortunately. Or production of new content, games and movies and TV shows.
Treasurer, Secretary, Financial Auditor. Ujiwara is terrible. <laughs> it's funny how she always just breaks. Her brain just goes. The cocky is over the side, she still just can't get over it. That's like literally what he was saying. Someone who's been given a new toy. Uh, yeah. A terrible. Marine cop. Use phones to make an important call or look something. I do like I do like the attention to detail where the filter was moving just slightly slower. You reckon either of them can do that?
Unless I hit. You both look so ugly that it's actually cute. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sooner or later they'll chip away at the work. They'll chip away at Miko. Or did someone intentionally accidentally lock them in? Although I think Kagi also looked shocked as well. They mentioned that before, didn't they? The suspension bridge effect. Oh my gosh, neither of them actually set it up.
These two really are right for each other. He's more brazen than I would have imagined. The way these watch out <laughs> so he jumps on her. You are extremely close. <gasps> How did I not see that coming? Okay, Ishigami. <laughs> I wonder if every character said that. No, I think at least three of them have the. Is that what this? What are they doing? In the background. I don't, I don't think I'd wondered about her mother before. So all she has is her distant father. Master cardiologist. Shinomiya's family doctor. What goes around comes around. Love sickness. Oh. 
I love the the shading and stuff on his face. As idiotic as fall in love. <laughs> the kids call it Sundare these days. Yes, love is a heart disease. Zaya Sakud. <laughs> could just incredibly embarrassed. Two hundred, good lord. Her brain is so... the things that she goes through. <laughs> this... Yeah, Doctor's got a backstory as well, huh?
I honestly don't know how I didn't see them using Miko again one more time. I don't know where I thought that that skit was gonna go, but just because I'd managed to completely put the idea of Miko walking in on them out of my mind as one of the possible resolutions for it, it totally caught me by surprise. <laughs> and it was, oh my gosh. It was funny though. So that was another great episode. I um, I don't know where the show's. I don't know. I don't know what to. I don't know what to talk about here now. It's uh like I just want to watch. I just want to watch and enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I don't know whether it's worth sort of speculating a lot. But anyway, what happened in it? We had um. Yeah, trying to break down Miko. Well, break down sounds bad. It's more like trying to break down her barriers a bit, I guess. I think over time, she's going to... You know, the idea is that she's going to defrost much in the same way as Kaguya did. Um, each of them has their weird sort of issues, but by being put together in this way and getting to interact with each other, it's all beneficial for all of them, I think. They're all turning into they're all turning into different, better people, in my opinion. It's really really nice to see. I like I like that sort of thing. Um they are you know, it's it's good. You know, Ishigami we basically didn't see any of him at the start of the show, and then we found him and for a little while he was just a one shot. Um feels awful about whatever situation just happened. I want to die, so I'm going home, and then he leaves, which was, um, you know, funny, but just look at him now. He's, you know, so comfortable, sort of around them, hangs out. It was really nice to seeing him and um, Shiragane just playing Marine Kart together and just hanging out. It's a uh, it's a really nice thing to see, in my opinion. I didn't realize how much I liked just seeing that scene itself. Speaking of marine cart, I don't know what the rules are between what they can and can't use when they're talking about names of stuff. Like, you know, this one was marine cart. Um, but they've also used the names of, like, Twitter and Instagram directly. So... Don't know. I don't know much about that sort of thing. Tell me if you happen to know the reason why some shows will use some things and not. Is it like a deal with licensing or whatever? It's funny that Miko trusts and holds Chica in such high regard because Chica is hilarious, but she's also definitely not as pure as, um, Miko seems to think that she is. On the other hand, that makes Chika the perfect person to be able to help initially break down her barriers, since she'll... Uh, Miko will basically listen to anything that she says, I think. Um, because of that high regard, um, it does mean that Chika will be able to corrupt her. Um, which sounds terrible, but, you know. I think is all for the better to try to get her to be able to integrate with, you know, other people better. And then we got the photos, which was, you know, just a fun little thing as well. Uh, and then this last section was not a lot to pull out of that. We can just see how how conflicted and torn Kagi is mind is, honestly. Still just completely steadfast denying her feelings towards Shiragane there. But, um, 
but just completely betrayed by her <laughs> or by her heart, like literally her heart rate. Something that was mentioned in there also, I didn't consider I can't recall whether I've previously realized that her mother is actually has actually passed away. I don't know whether I had any thoughts or whether I thought I knew what had happened to her or not. But yeah, it turns out she's just got her father who isn't great, who interacts with her mostly via servants which keep an eye on her and all that sort of thing. No wonder she's kind of messed up. Hmm. Anyway, excellent episode. We've only got four left, I assume? So, I don't know what I'm going to watch when I'm finished with this. I want to keep up momentum. So I'd like to keep watching something. Um, tell me if you've got any ideas. Um, not sure whether there's anything in particular that I'd like to watch either. I mean, react to. That's, that's what I'm getting at here. I'd like something that would be worth reacting to. And I'm not sure whether my type of reactions would do well for every for show. Sure. I feel like there's quite a few where I would just sit there stone-faced for a lot of it. Anyway. Kaguya-sama, Love is War. Great show. Still loving it. And, uh... Meanwhile, I hope all of you are safe and taking care of yourselves. So, you know, while all of the other crazy stuff is going on, shouldn't be ignoring it necessarily, but sometimes you need a break, and hopefully this helped give you a bit of a break from it. Anyway, until next time, I'll catch you later. <laughs>